to show you guys. It's 81 on cruise control in 8th gear. You can hear it's pretty windy today, so I'm super happy with this guy. Hey guys, happy Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas. Um, this is gonna be my 5,000 mile review on the Diesel Gladiator. The reason why I wanted to do it now is I thought that at the end of the year, that's when people start considering changing out vehicles and moving to something different and of course, uh, new car deals. So anyway, stick around, there's gonna be pros and cons. Uh, yes, there are cons, yes, there are pros. Uh, and again, I'm not a professional driver, uh, but this is my honest, un unbiased opinion and um, I think it'll be useful. Stick around. Quick rundown. I know it's windy, guys. I'm sorry. Um, this is a speed plate system, and it allows me to do all four tires at one time. I air down and air up all four at a time. This area out here is rock sand the loose sand some shell and then lots of thorns so out here i'll probably go down to about 10 and this should be good for just about everything i'm going to go through there's some water crossings i don't know how much more water's down there but anyway i'm going to get down to a neat place where we can kind of sit around and relax and point at this thing and, and point out the good things and the bad things about it and why i think it should be somebody's next vehicle Anyway, stay tuned, guys. And we're going to try to see if we can make it up this guy. I could have gone down. I decided I'd only... Put one lip right there on the left is pretty big. I decided I'd only go down to 15, but we'll see how it does. Oh, yeah. just And that lip was probably, you know, 18 inches. Just nothing. easy guys in this view I was thinking about the the premise of this video I was thinking I was gonna come out here in this area it's a nice OHV area we have close to Amarillo um, it's public land actually um, and part of it's part of a state park uh, but for the most part the Rangers out here are really good dudes and they let us kind of go where we want and so with it being 60 to 70 mile an hour winds outside I kind of thought oh goodness that's a big one we would just kind of drive around and talk about it and, and approach some of these obstacles and see what it looks like, you know? I mean, that was a, a huge, huge uh, vertical climb, which went real, real quick and easy, but that just shows you this vehicle is highly capable. Um, and I'll just pick random ones here. Like, here's a drop-in. We'll just pick this one. And uh, this, this Gladiator is incredibly... Uh, planted and so I kind of thought I would just kind of show you guys around as we pick and chose kind of what we wanted to do uh, but till I got back to the place where I wanted to sit down and kind of just just go over some simple topics with you and like I'll just turn into this one now we're in now we're in um, two-wheel drive uh, we're aired down but we're we're just in two-wheel drive no full wheel We can just kind of navigate these things pretty simply. Um, and that just shows you this, the vehicle's naturally capable. Um, and then obviously would you do some of the things that we do to them, like I've done to mine uh, and modded them for, for the kind of things we're into, um, they become even more capable. And so I just kind of wanted to illustrate some of that stuff as we drove around here and you know, played on some of the obstacles that make, that's what having four wheel drive is fun. Um, so anyway, we'll continue getting to the back. Hopefully where I'm wanting to go is an open area and wrapped in trees and there's not a lot of people out there. Even though this is Christmas Eve, there's quite a people out here on quads and Jeeps and dirt bikes enjoying it. So stick around. Looks like the water's pretty low today, guys. This is nice. I'm hoping that with the water like this and it being a holiday, we can um, 
get over there, get in the back where nobody's at. That's kind of what I'm, kind of what I'm hoping for, guys. You know, one of the good things about this um, Gladiator is that it really does still do truck things. And and I know a lot of people watching these videos from a lot of different places, you know, may consider this like Jeep things or something. But but in the state of Texas, it, you know, in the rural communities where I grew up, you know, farm and ranch communities and stuff, this is the stuff that our regular trucks are tasked to do all the time. And so to me, it's always surprising that people are like, oh, well trucks, you know, out wheeling and stuff like that. And and if you think about it, some of the more natural things that we do with vehicles uh, in the state of Texas, especially trucks, is they wheel. And maybe it's not specifically rock crawling, but uh, if you want to consider the type of trails, you know, you do overlanding and, and uh, just trail riding and stuff, this is what a ranch truck um, basically is purchased to do from the get-go so um, it surprises me a lot of times when people think that the gladiator possibly couldn't be as capable as the JL um, I think that that's just crazy a lot of times basically what it comes out to is wheelbase it's not necessarily what the gladiator can't physically do it's more based on is it just too big to do what what one of the other vehicles does and that's generally some of the some of the issues we run into with the gladiator but as far as sheer capability um, this thing can tackle everything that you would do with the JL um, with ease, pretty much. And, and the comparison's almost 100% uh, the same. But you do have a longer wheelbase, so that gets us into trouble sometimes, but then sometimes it helps us out of trouble. So I think when you, when you talk about the generality between, you know, what's the best thing you could do for overlanding, what's the best vehicle you can use, um, you know, Jeeps originally were the original like overlanding vehicle, and then through manipulation in, in the farm industry and ranching industry and something like that, we developed the trucks to be as capable for doing the same thing as a daily duty and not necessarily as a hobbyist. 
And so that being said, I didn't think that there was going to be a letdown when I left the jail world to the gladiator world. And and to tell you now that I've been out here uh, and being, you know, Will in this gladiator for the last, you know, whole, I think five months, four months, um, it's exactly what I thought it was. It's, it's the same thing as, you know, a jail is just longer and, and how it handles duties is just a little different. But it still does them all the same. And I'll tell you this. There shouldn't be any other platform uh, than the diesel in this Gladiator. Um, it just doesn't do it justice. And and yes, I do have the Banks um, iDash and Pedal Monster on it. Um, but before I did that, there was a huge disparity between this motor and the 3.6 Pentastar. Uh, the closer one was more likely the, the twin turbo uh, four-cylinder was actually more appropriate to match as far as comparison and drivability than say the 3.6 Pentastar. Um, so food for thought guys, um, if you're never going to tow and you're using it for, you know, nearly city things and then camping on the weekends and stuff, I would strongly consider you guys uh, taking a look at the four cylinder turbo. It's a fantastic vehicle. It really is. And the motor is, is highly impressive. Now, if you're going to really kit your stuff down and you're going to really weight it down and you possibly pull trailers and stuff like that and do, you know, truck things uh, and you don't want to have a secondary vehicle, this thing does it. I pull my off-road trailer through everything. This is a review video, so I don't have it with me, obviously, but I would easily pull that trailer through all of this stuff with this Gladiator and not have an issue. Uh, and, and I've been in all that deep sand that you guys have seen so far and I haven't even taken it in a four-wheel drive yet. So... Yes, I own 39s, 1350s. Uh, I'm married down to 15 pounds, but still, that shows you that the wide track of this and the length of it really helps you to stretch out and keep traction moving and spread the weight out instead of it being shorter and compact with all the weight more centrally located. Therefore, it creates less of a flotation uh, process. So, those are just my thoughts. Um, I definitely do believe uh, that this probably has more to offer for every person versus the JL due to the fact that you are always going to need something to be um, a go-getter at the house, a hauler at the house, move friends furniture at the house, um, all those things combined. And then at the same time, it's steel wheels. Uh, you can do your overlanding. You can tow trailers. You can do all those types of things all while you're in something like this. Kind of wanted to show you guys, you know, what it looks This is far rougher than uh, the uh, video is showing. Um, I'll tell you this, I'm highly impressed with the Metal Cloak and Evo suspension uh, spring combination. Uh, I've got the Rock Sports and uh, shocks from Metal Cloak, the entire suspension lift kit from Metal Cloak, and then I've got the Evo springs, the Evo four and a half springs, and it just makes the thing incredible yes i'm moving around a lot but there's no dramatic jolting and sheer hard drops and sharp uh hits it's, it really deals with it well now this is technically more of a, a dirt bike cow um utv uh jeep trail but you can see the navigators i mean the gladiators navigating it quite fine but we're going to keep going down this little trail and hopefully where I want to be is open and we'll get to this. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks on the inside, you know, you know, attacking these trails versus what you got to see on the outside while I was just doing the voiceover. Um, they're pretty aggressive. And, and like I said, um, this thing's just taking it like a champ and, and uh, we'll get down here and we'll start the pros and cons. Stay tuned guys. Here we go. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I brought a book. The reason I did is I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover anything that I had forgotten or, or didn't forget anything I didn't want to cover. So. I brought this and, and I think it's going to be important um, because everybody 
um, says all the time, oh, you're kind of a Jeep fanboy. Um, and that's not true. So everybody knows that uh, on the daily I drive a Ford F-350 uh, diesel crew cab and, and uh, I think that's the best vehicle they make these days. We've, we've been driving them since 2010 and we tried Dodges and Chevys and, and uh, they just don't compare reliability wise and the ability to stand up to what we do with them. And, and of course the diesel is just fantastic. That being said, when I started this venture, I was in a JL and um, I loved it too, but it just doesn't, it didn't fit the, the mold for me. And so that's why I'm here. So here we go. I say we start with the cons first. What do you guys think? I mean, I am an owner, it is mine. And you would think that if it was mine, I wouldn't hate anything about it, but that's not true. So the first thing, cost of ownership. Off the showroom floor, it's gonna cost more than the JL Rubicon on the same trim level. Um, it's going to weigh more than the JL in the same trim level. That being said, can you cost effectively make it pay for itself by doing nothing to it uh, and accepting it as a, as a more expensive platform than the gas motor, whether that's the four cylinder or the V6? Can, can you make that um, comparison and can you make up the money that you're going to spend in this indifferently? That's kind of hard to say. You'd have to drive a lot uh, to make up the fuel mileage, to help use fuel mileage as a way to make up that compensating cost. I don't know it would. Then it, then I guess at the same time, um, I, I guess we'll, we'll throw this into the same thing. Um, maintenance. Maintenance going to be considerably more. A standard oil change is probably around $300 at any place you go to, whether it's a dealership or a local. They have to use a specific type of oil filter. It's $55 alone. And then um, uh, the oil filter uh, is something like, maybe the fuel filters are 85 and the, the oil filter is 55. Either way, it also takes nine quarts of oil, specific oil. So you're talking about $300 an oil change. Now they recommend seven to 10,000 miles. You change oil in a standard car, um, every say 5,000 miles, you're still getting about the same, but you're paying twice. So it's roughly the same, but it's not. You you end up paying a little bit more on the diesel side of it. So that would be one thing to consider. Number two, this drives me bananas. At this day and age, why Jeep can't make their window buttons auto down and auto up? This drives me absolutely insane. There's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of places where you're trying to get those windows up real fast. Uh, you've got dust blowing in, snow blowing in, rain blowing in, whatever, smoke blowing in. You're trying to close them and you can't. You have to sit there and hold them at the same time. That drives me crazy, Jeep. Get that fixed. It, it couldn't be hard to have a, a dual switchable um, switch to control the windows. For 60 plus thousand dollars, you'd think you'd get that standard. Number three. Console and drink carrying area in both the JL and um, the JT are, they, they make no sense to me. Um, I don't know why we still have a pull handle, why we couldn't have a push, uh, a foot push um, emergency brake. That would alleviate some room down there. Um, the cup holders are real close up underneath the console. So sometimes when you're picking it up, you end up hitting the lip. And you know, I've spilt coffee in this Jeep 42,000 times and I've only put 6,000 miles on it. So that drives me absolutely crazy. You would think that this day and age they would be able to reconfigure that console, put the emergency brake down on the foot, foot actuated emergency brake, like all trucks. Um, Cause that's what this is, it's not a Jeep anymore, Jeep. Jeep, this is a truck, Jeep. Jeep, this is a truck. Uh, and add a standard console. That would be really nice. Number four. So this goes along with the console. The switches for the console are a pain in the butt to get to. It doesn't matter if it's the driver or the passenger. The safest way to do it is basically to pull over because if you're trying to get the auxiliary switches, they're behind the gear, gear shift for the driver. So it's kind of hard to navigate. Sometimes you put it into neutral. Sometimes you slap it into another gear manual. Um, and then the lockers and sway bar disconnect switches. Those are in 
a terrible place. I recently got to sit in a Bronco and I loved what they did with their switches. They put them up on top and close enough to where the driver, when you're driving by braille, you can reach up and make your switches. You can also do that in real time. There's no stopping, waiting for it to connect or disconnect or anything like that. So instead of a driver looking down, reaching for his stuff, you're looking ahead doing this. So that's a huge safety concern. I think we have some guys coming our way. Um, and then I guess the last thing, I haven't had any maintenance issues with it. Everything's been fantastic. I will say this, I've already had the backup Cramley Gremlin. Now it stopped working after a month and it, it, it would work uh, every once in a while and then just stop working. So now we're in a condition where it doesn't work. So Jeep, for $60,000 can we get our stereo fixed? And this has been happening since 2018 in this platform. So hopefully they'll get it fixed. On to the pros. So I had to get my coffee. Um, so those are my cons. Other than that, I haven't found anything in 5,000 miles in a short period of time. I haven't found anything else that really um, irritates me or disturbs me in any way other than what I listed. And I know those are all superficial things. Um, but when you're paying this kind of money for a vehicle, those things matter. And, and ergonomics in a vehicle with what we do with these vehicles, we travel a long ways to go where we're going. And we spend a long time on trail. So, you know, we think about ergonomics not being a huge important part, but they really are. Um, reaching down, turning things on and off, you know, you're taking your eye off the trail and that's not good either. Having your passenger try to do it, that's not good either. So, um, I know they seem small, but they're really important. And so, those are things to consider. Um, again, to get the lockers and the sway bar disconnect and all that stuff, you have to go with the Rubicon model. You know, you're starting at somewhere in the $63,000 range. Um, and I think comparatively speaking, maybe the Bronco is the only thing that comes out now that has that same comparison. Um, and I think it's around that same cost uh, point. I think it's around 60 plus thousand to get those type of options. So I guess for market value, it's where it's supposed to be. Um, but I, I think, I think you should be able to get the lockers and the sway bar disconnects in different models. Maybe some of the interior trim stuff is, you can't, but I, I would think that you'd, get, you'd be able to kind of a la carte be able to order from whether it's a sport or, or, or whatever, or Willys, you should be able to order uh, the lockers and the sway bar. That's probably my biggest asterisk against Jeep right now is that I wish I could build an a la carte Jeep versus having to build what they already have built for me. So, that's probably the biggest uh, con that they have is that you can't a la carte the items that you want on the model you want. So that's that. Okay, pros. Here are the pros. And the pros I'm gonna start with is the number one biggest thing to me about the JT is drivability. And this is versus uh, it's counterpart the JL because generally what I'm asked a lot of is how does it compare to the JL uh, which one is better which one do you like better which one feels better I will tell you this drivability hands down this is more refined than a JL whether it's it's the planted feeling whether it's the length um, I'm not sure there's a lot of things that go into it but at the same time, the power plant makes a huge difference as well. Um, you're never wanting for torque and speed. It's always there when you want it. This and and guys, remember this is or and guys and girls, this is pre me putting the bank stuff on. I took that, uh, I put that on to a couple things. I, I have to do a big review for it, and then B to remove the the diesel lag like you normally have on diesels. There's a buildup process before power comes on. Well, this alleviates that. It just it, it takes that um, that pause period out and just gives you the turbo when it's supposed to be there. So it's something Jeep should be doing anyway. They're just not. So that being said, 
before and prior this is this is you know brand new i'm talking about brand new when it was on the regular tires no lift it just drove easier it was better it was easier to get on the highway to be, make to get up to speed on the highway it was easier to maintain speed or catch up or slow down or merge traffic just the overall drivability was better and i would say 80 percent of that was the power plant the other 20 percent was length width uh weight of the vehicle and such moving on um this is an important one to me overall capability of the truck when i was driving and i was talking to you guys about uh, a lot of people look at this vehicle as something different, like a hybrid or something like a hobbyist vehicle or something like that. I wanted something that I could use for its purpose and what it is. It's a truck. It is not a Jeep. It's a truck. And I use it for tr truck things. I expect it to do everything that it did coming out here today. If it didn't, it would be a terrible truck. Most trucks you go by will do what it does. With that being said, they don't have front and rear lockers. They don't have sway bar disconnect. They will not climb like this guy will climb. That's a huge difference. A lot of those trucks, you can't get the diesel in. You have a, either some type of V6 or some type of V8. Uh, I tow 90% of the time, probably 99% of the time. So towing, the most efficient vehicle towing and motor platform is a diesel. That's what it's built for. The entire purpose of its build uh, was to maintain lots of torque low in RPMs for long periods of time. That's what they do, that's what it does well. Uh, and it hands down beats all the other mid-sized trucks. Toyota doesn't even come close. It's not even, it's not even a comparison. Um, and then, I don't know what else would be really next. Ranger doesn't really either. Um, the Bronco has the same uh, towing capacity, but again, it's a gas motor, so you're gonna be really pushing that vehicle to do what it needs to do. Um, the weight holds it back and that's really the only that holds it back from being able to tow more because it's the same this is the same power plant that they put in the dodge 1500 half ton pickup so um there's some things you can do there but again when you upgrade the suspension system and go to heavier duty end links heavier duty sway bar heavier duty uh control arms heavier duty springs at the same time when you're upgrading those you're also upgrading the towing capacity as well so Keep that in mind. Um, Evo is really good about that. Evo's got a real good suspension package out right now. If that's something you're really looking at, because I tow a lot, so the springs and stuff I use are from Evo. Uh, keep that in mind. And everything you'll see, what they say is on, on their side it says HD, heavy duty. And the reason why they do that is because it needs to be heavy duty. First of all, you're not only lifting the truck, but then you're going to be using the truck to do truck things. So you need to have that extra capability above just lifting the truck. So keep that in mind um it really does truck set well i built that slide in the back and it makes it so nice to get anything out um and i think also above the jeep is it's more planted even the jl it's it's obviously it's longer so it's more planted so that's really nice um so again if i was if i was basing you know my choices my check marks off the the jt and the and the jl so so far we have you know the jt leading and so i don't know that that i would ever consider going back to jl and the next the next step will kind of explain why so um the next one i have on the list is the top three things i like about it, or top five the number three important one is going to be uh, towing it tows really well um, my JL was a 3.6 Pentastar it was a 2020 it had the rib supercharger on it and to be honest it was a dog when you were towing with it because the way those pro chargers work is they only make boost if they're in RPM and if you're not in RPM uh, you're not in boost well on a highway when you're running at constant speed you're generally not in the boost so therefore you're not producing the power extra power that they proclaim to produce on that motor. Only when you're in boost and in high RPMs is when that motor produces those low end torque numbers that are higher. So it really just couldn't do this job. This guy, um, we did, it was over, it was over 1300 miles. We did from Amarillo to Arkansas, 
to the Adventure in Ozarks um, and then back. And we towed the whole time, rain, you know, heavy, heavy rain, lots of wind storms. Um, and I still averaged, I think, 13 miles a gallon at 80 miles an hour. And that was with two guys in a truck, full kitted for, for the week that we were down there. And, and so I would have never gotten that out of the jail, never. And so I'll say ease of towing is, is highly impressive. You'll be surprised. It'll just jerk that thing around. And, and, and my off-road trailer, full, with, a, with 15 gallons of water on it, weighs uh, right at 2,400 pounds. So, I mean, a, a pretty healthy off-road trailer, but still, it's no problem for this guy. And, and again, remember guys, this is on 39s. We got 13 miles a gallon on the stock 410 gears, trust axles, uh, RCVs, bead locks, 39s, four and a half inch lift. We still got 13 miles a gallon. Uh, towing at 80 miles an hour that's incredible incredible now when i re-gear i'm assuming i'll be in the 15 mark like if i get 15 out of the re-gear I, I will never complain again i don't i'm not the guy that sits there and watches the gas gauge so once i kind of learned what it did um i just have the digital gauge in the middle of it i don't even look at the fuel mileage per gallon so it, other than when i'm filling up I'm like, oh, I must have been heavy on my foot this last, you know, this last tank. Because, uh, you know, maybe it'll be different, you know, two to three gallons or, or sorry, two to two, one and a half to two gallons, maybe it'll be different. So, I don't know. Um, it's just not something I really am worried about. That's, that's not why I bought this thing. And again, I tow with it, so there's, there's not really such thing as fuel economy while you're towing. <laughs> like, there's not. My daily, uh, the F-350, you know, I tow a 50,000 or a 45,000 pound trailer. And so I think I averaged somewhere around like six or seven. I, mean, I don't know what you expect to get it, but if you're using something for what it's uh, meant to be, then that's kind of what you're gonna get. So anyway, thumbs up on towing. It hands down destroys the Jeeps, destroys them. Uh, number four. This is, this is why uh, it's a winner for me versus the JL. It's absolute versatility. And when I say that, I specifically mean versatility in relation to cab and bed space. In the JL, to have everything we needed, I had to take one of the seats out and I had to build basically you know, a drawer slide system and a refrigerator. So I had the seat behind the driver's side still there and behind them was the refrigerator slide then to the right of them was an entire full length uh jl unlimited drawer system so there was a long drawer that pulled out from the back and then there was a side drawer to open up from uh the passenger side which i have available um if anybody you know wants to dm me about it i can shoot you some pictures and and stuff it used to be in the jl i've still got it um i didn't sell it with the jeep but anyway nevertheless and i want you guys to Make sure you comment below. Ask questions. There, there's going to be a million things that I didn't cover that you may want to know. Um, and I say comprehensive, but I need to make sure that, you know, if there's something out there that you want to know, I cover it. But back to being the versatility. So what I didn't like about that was the fact that everything was always packed inside. So now you only had a place for three people and the rest of the inside of the vehicle was, was equipment. Well, that's bad for a couple reasons. So sure, you can lash everything down, but if you get a car wreck, do you want to take something in the back of my head? Do you want to take the refrigerator in the back of my head or say a bag of tools or or just anything loose in the back? We don't want that flying around. Like, it's not a good deal. Um, secondly, what was the point of getting the unlimited? You just lost all your space. So now you have no cabin space. So you got an unlimited Jeep JL for three seats? No, absolutely not. You bought it because you wanted four seats, four doors. But you just relinquished that when, when you decided, hey, I, I'm gonna need to build a slide system. Well, you sure couldn't build one without using the other seat because it wouldn't be big enough to hold anything anyway. So then you'd have more stuff on your roof rack or you'd be having a hitch rack. and So that just drove me crazy all the time. Well, guess what? Well, this guy, the entire inside of this thing is completely free of clutter. At all times on all of my trips, I can run four people in this truck all the time. And fifth, I guess if you're gonna smash in there, 
and the only thing I have inside is, you know, there's a fire extinguisher, but it's up on the uh, roll bar, and then I've got all the stuff under the seat, uh, med kits and blankets and extra jackets and stuff like that. But as far as the interior, you can use 100% the interior on all of my trips, wherever we go, for however long we go, for all humans, because everything goes in the back. So you see that I built that X rack because I wanted to be able to use the entire bed and not have the spare under it. Well, you can't put a 39 underneath, so. I built the next rack to put the Baja tire on top, and so now I've got the entire bed for all my storage. So what I do is on that, it houses my compressor all the time. There's an extra 100 amp AGM battery on it with a switch system. Uh, that's where my refrigerator goes on the slide, so I always have drinks with me when we're on a trail. Um, and then assorted goods and gear. Anything else, we put in the trailer. So there's really no need to have anything inside the vehicle and that right there was a game changer because if I just go with the guys and I don't take the trailer we just go camping stealth camping I throw my tent my cooler already goes on the slide so my refrigerator is on the slide my tent my food everything goes on the slide and I still have the inside open that's a huge deal it's a huge deal so if you're one of the guys that pulls a utility camper think about that uh, everything that doesn't go on a camper can go on the back in the bed and you never have to take anything out right now uh, my compressor's always with me, um, and it's a 150-pound uh, Craftsman pancake, so it just dwarfs the a ARB twins and whatever twins you want to come up with. It just hammers them. Um, and then, of course, my tools, my air down tools, my recovery, all those things are always with me. Uh, a second battery that's separate than my main system, so if I need to jump, I can jump off of it. All those things get to stay in a vehicle and they are not cumbersome and they don't slow my use of the vehicle down on a daily average. So when I come back to town and I'm working, I still have all my four seats and I still have bed space because on that slide you can put anything on that bed and, and I don't have to unpack all my overlanding camping gear. So I felt that that was just a game changer. And that's something we don't consider. People are always forgetting things because in their vehicles, four runners, Jeeps, uh, you know, they always have to unpack them to use them during the week. Whereas, I don't unpack anything. The only other thing I unpack is the trailer. Everything that's in here, I just leave. So, that's a huge plus for me. And I want to say this. I know this is, you know, not what you guys want to hear. <laughs> and this is slightly superficial and opinionated. But, the look. Look at this thing. Um, we're gonna we're gonna laugh about this, but um, it really does. As big as it is, is it, it's still smaller than you know a real big lifted truck. So, so I don't think I get questioned about my twig and berries because I'm on 39s and the size of my truck because it's not just massive, but it really is. And yes, I agree. When they first come on the dealer floor, they look terrible i just don't like the way they look they look like skinny little i don't know something i hadn't eaten in a long long time versus now i think it fits the look and so that being said i'm super i'm super proud of the way it looks and i get lots of compliments and and i built it how i wanted to build it and i built it how i felt it needed to be built uh, because it was function purposed and and i don't care about names or brand names or who supports who, I don't care. Um, I will never lead you guys to buy something that is just a name brand. Uh, you guys see that I build 90%, I'm, I'm in the process of building my slides right now. I build 90% of the things that I put on it. I do 90% of the work. I can't do gear work, so that'll have to go out. But um, the looks, I think when you compare this guy to lots of the other stuff that's out there, it's, it's a pretty menacing looking guy. And it handles trails with ease. So, if, if there was going to be a five-star system, I think I would give, uh, you know, the Gladiator a 4.7 out of five. And my JL would have been about like a four, uh, a four. So, that should tell you. It was, the, it was a 2020 J, JL Unlimited Rubicon 3.6 Pentastar. This is a 2021 Gladiator Rubicon 3.0 Diesel. And I'm giving it a 4.7, and I'm giving the JL a 4.0. And the biggest difference is the 4.0. I, I hated the, the, the 3.6 in that JL. It's gutless. It's terrible. 
in this guy, the, the 4.7 would be based on the fact that, you know, this thing has 5,000, almost 6,000 miles on it. The camera hasn't worked a month out of that five months time. Um, when I first got it, it had these funny little uh, engine codes that I would take to the dealership. And, and of course, when you get there, they're gone. They don't know what they are. Well, ever since I put the bank system on it, they've disappeared. So those little things uh, make me want to give it a 4.7. I would hands down never buy another JL again. Just wouldn't. Um, so that being said, I think this is as fair and as comprehensive as I can do it. Please engage in the comments. I, I will answer any question. And, and I guess if you if you watched any of my videos prior, you'll see that uh, I don't have to be friends with anybody uh, as far as a, a vendor goes. Um, and I'll tell you what I think. And, and I think this thing really does, you know, compared to the Tacomas I've been in and compared to the Rangers I've been in and even in being in the Bronco and stuff, this thing really suits the bill for what we do, overlanding and camping, and we'll call it crawl landing. Um, Cause I like rock crawling too, and it still does it. And, and uh, you know, we hit mud and sand and rocks and whatever's in front of us, or whatever is on the worst trail I could find that nobody goes down, that's where I go. Because I want to go on the places that nobody goes versus the places that everybody goes. So whatever on those trails, he's going to have to go through with the trailer. So, uh, and it's done that very well. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Comment down below. Remember to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me. Uh, you know, visit my Instagram. My link tree's there for, you know, swag and apparel, anything else. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. That helps as well. So, again, thanks for watching.